Hello friends, my brothers and sisters in the faith. Grab your Bible. We're going to be reading Daniel chapter 6 and hopefully if the good Lord's willing, we're going to also read chapter 7. It is so wonderful. I don't know if you're new to joining us in reading through the Bible. We have already read through most of the Old Testament and to start to skim through for the book of Daniel, we have come so far in reading the Bible together and it's so wonderful. There are, I believe, 12 chapters in the book of Daniel, so we are roughly halfway through. The book of Daniel has so much wonderful and amazing content, so let's jump right in. Chapter 6, the book of Daniel. Daniel in the lion's den. Darius the Mede decided to divide the kingdom into 120 provinces, and he appointed a high officer to rule over each province. The king also chose Daniel and two others as administrators to supervise the high officers and protect the king's interests. Daniel soon proved himself more capable than all the other administrators and high officers. Because of Daniel's great ability, the king made plans to place him over the entire empire. Then the other administrators and high officers began searching for some fault in the way Daniel was handling government affairs. But they couldn't find anything to criticize or condemn. He was faithful, always responsible, and completely trustworthy. So they concluded, our only chance of finding grounds for accusing Daniel will be in connection with the rules of his religion. So the administrators and high officers went to the king and said, Long live King Darius. We are all in agreement, we administrators, officials, high officers, advisors, and governors, that the king should make a law that would be strictly enforced. Give orders that for the next 30 days, any person who prays to anyone, divine or human, except to you, your majesty, be thrown into the den of lions. And now your majesty issued and signed this law, so it cannot be changed. An official law of the Medes and Persians that cannot be revoked. So King Darius signed the law. It's amazing the power of influence. Daniel and his three friends were able to be together in serving the Lord. And now all of these high officials and administrators are working together against Daniel and his friends because of their own selfish interests. And you can either hang with the people that are on the good side or hang with the negative influencers. Hopefully we are following people that are worth following, mainly our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Verse 10, but when Daniel learned the law had been signed, he went home and knelt down as usual in his upstairs room with its windows open towards Jerusalem. He prayed three times a day, just as he had always done, giving thanks to his God. Then the officials went together to Daniel's house and found him praying and asking for God's help. So they went straight to the king and reminded him about his law. Did you not sign a law that for the next 30 days, any person who prays to anyone, divine or human, except to you, your majesty, will be thrown into the den of lions? Yes, the king replied, that decision stands. It is an official law of the Medes and Persians that cannot be revoked. Then they told the king, that man Daniel, one of the captives from Judah, is ignoring you and your law. He still prays to his God three times a day. Hearing this, the king was deeply troubled, and he tried to think of a way to save Daniel. He spent the rest of the day looking for a way to get Daniel out of this predicament. In the evening, the men went together to the king and said, Your majesty, you know that according to the law of the Medes and the Persians, no law that the king signs can be changed. So at last, the king gave orders for Daniel to be arrested and thrown into the den of lions. The king said to him, May your God, whom you serve, so faithfully rescue you. A stone was brought and placed over the mouth of the den. The king sealed the stone with his own royal seal and the seal of his nobles so that no one could rescue Daniel. Then the king returned to his palace and spent the night fasting. He refused his usual entertainment and couldn't sleep at all that night. Very early the next morning, the king got up and hurried out to the lion's den. When he got there, he called out in anguish, Daniel, servant of the living God, was your God whom you served so faithfully, able to rescue you from the lions? Daniel answered, Long live the king. My God sent his angel to shut the lion's mouth so that they would not hurt me, for I have been found innocent in his sight, and I have not wronged you, your majesty. Oh, I'm like about to cry. The king was overjoyed and ordered that Daniel be lifted from the den. Not a scratch was found on him, for he had trusted in his God. Then the king gave orders to arrest the men who had maliciously accused Daniel. He had them thrown into the lion's den along with their wives and children. The lions leaped on them and tore them apart before they even hit the floor of the den. Then King Darius sent this message to the people of every race and nation and language throughout the world. 
Peace and prosperity to you. I decree that everyone throughout my kingdom should tremble with fear before the Lord God of Daniel. For he is the living God and he will endure forever. His kingdom will never be destroyed and his rule will never end. He rescues and saves his people. He performs miraculous signs and wonders in the heavens and on earth. He has rescued Daniel from the power of the lions. So Daniel prospered during the reign of Darius and the reign of Cyrus the Persian. Wow, God is so amazing. And I would love it if we heard from presidents and kings and rulers these types of words and decrees as we're hearing from Darius. It's so wonderful. All right, chapter seven, the book of Daniel. Daniel's vision of four beasts. Earlier, during the first year of King Belshazzar's reign in Babylon, Daniel had a dream and saw visions as he lay in his bed. He wrote down the dream, and this is what he saw. In my vision that night, I, Daniel, saw a great storm churning the surface of a great sea, with strong winds blowing from every direction. Then four huge beasts came up out of the water, each different from the others. The first beast was like a lion with eagle's wings. As I watched, its wings were pulled off, and it was left standing with its two hind feet on the ground like a human being. And it was given a human mind. Then I saw a second beast, and it looked like a bear. It was rearing up on one side, and it had three ribs in its mouth between its teeth. And I heard a voice saying to it, Get up, devour the flesh of many people. Then the third of these strange beasts appeared, and it looked like a leopard. It had four bird's wings on its back, and it had four heads. Great authority was given to this beast. Then in my vision that night, I saw a fourth beast, terrifying, dreadful, and very strong. It devoured and crushed its victims with huge iron teeth and trampled the remains beneath its feet. It was different from any of the other beasts, and it had ten horns. As I was looking at the horns, suddenly another small horn appeared among them. Three of the first horns were torn out by the roots to make room for it. This little horn had eyes like human eyes and a mouth that was boasting arrogantly. I watched as thrones were put in its place, and the ancient one sat down to judge. His clothing was as white as snow, his hair like purest wool. He sat on a fiery throne with wheels and blazing fire, and a river of fire was pouring out. Flowing from his presence, millions of angels ministered to him. Many millions stood to attend him. Then the court began its session, and the books were opened. I continued to watch because I could hear the little horn's boastful speech. I kept watching until the fourth beast was killed and its body was destroyed by fire. The other three beasts had their authority taken from them, but they were allowed to live a little while longer. As my vision continued that night, I saw something like a son of man coming with the clouds of heaven. He approached the ancient one and was led into his presence. He was given authority, honor, and sovereignty over all the nations of the world. So the people of every race and nation and language would obey him. Glory, glory, hallelujah. His rule is eternal. It will never end. His kingdom will never be destroyed. Amen. Verse 15, I, Daniel, was troubled by all I had seen, and my visions terrified me. So I approached one of those standing beside the throne and asked him what it all meant. He explained it to me like this. These four huge beasts represent four kingdoms that will rise from the earth. But in the end, the holy people of the Most High will be given the kingdom and they will rule forever and ever. Then I wanted to know the true meaning of the fourth beast, the one so different from the others and so terrifying. It had devoured and crushed its victims with iron teeth and bronze claws, trampling the remains beneath its feet. I also asked about the ten horns on the fourth beast's head and the little horn that came up afterwards and destroyed three of the other horns. This horn had seemed greater than the others, and it had human eyes and a mouth that was boasting arrogantly. As I watched, this thorn was waging war against God's holy people and was defeating them until the Ancient One, the Most High, came and judged in favor of his holy people. Then the time arrived for the holy people to take over the kingdom. Then he said to me, this fourth beast is the fourth world power that will rule the earth. It will be different from all the others. It will devour the whole world, trampling and crushing everything in its path. Then another king will arise, different from the other ten, who will subdue three of them. He will defy the Most High and oppress the holy people of the Most High. He will try to change their sacred festivals and laws, and they will be placed under his control for a time, times, and half a time. 
but then the core will pass judgment and all his power will be taken away and completely destroyed. Then the sovereign power and greatness of all the kingdoms under heaven will be given to the holy people of the Most High. His kingdom will last forever and all rulers will serve and obey him. That was the end of the vision. I, Daniel, was terrified by my thoughts and my face was pale with fear, but I kept these things to myself. That's the end of chapter seven. Chapter eight is coming up. Daniel's vision of a ram and a goat. I do plan on studying these topics. I have studied them in the past, but it's been a minute. And I have a book of Daniel movie that's really good. I've watched it a few times. Maybe I'll show you guys because I do recommend it. I think it's a very good movie. Um, but I'm going to end in prayer. My phone keeps shutting off, but I'm going to end in prayer. Heavenly Father, we are so grateful for this time to read the Holy Scriptures, to be able to read the book of Daniel, and to get this message that was given so long ago and is still pertinent, important, and valuable for us today. The world is in a very difficult place right now, God, with all of your children dealing with some degree of difficulty or another, whether it be our personal life, our families, our loved ones, our health, someone that we care deeply for. Maybe we have friends or family members that don't believe in you, that they don't know you as the one true God. Israel is going through a very difficult time and war is actually happening. Sometimes I think with movies and television, we become dehumanized and don't see these things for the severity and importance that they are. But every man is made in your image and we are a gift. Our life is a gift. We, we're a gift to this world to serve you and your kingdom. This life that we have is something that is so precious and I don't mean to say that we are a gift because of anything valuable in us of ourselves, but because you have given us the breath of life, the beat in our heart, and we are called to do good works, to be loving and forgiving and patient. And the world is in such a dark place with so much hatred and evil and selfishness. We're called to, to bear fruits. And the fruits of the Spirit are such wonderful things. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control. We want to be bearing fruits for the kingdom of God, not because of some badge of courage or brownie points that we want to earn, but because we love you, Lord. And to see the suffering that's going on, the terrorism, and the evil things that are happening throughout the world, that it's almost hard to believe and understand. So we just ask that your will be done, that people will come back to knowing you, to serving you, to loving you as, as is deserved. And the hatred and evil in the world would come to an end. And we do know that someday that will happen. So we just ask for the strength, the wisdom, the peace to overcome these difficult times and whatever anyone else is going through. I, I pray that we come closer to you, Lord, that we spend more time in the Bible. We spend more time praying for literally no reason but because we love you and that we're able to be a light onto the world. And that we're able to point people to the one true God. We can be set apart, not afraid of lions or fire, but afraid of dishonoring you, afraid of drifting away from you, Lord, afraid of saying or doing anything to taint your name because your name is holy and glorious and you are an all-powerful God. So I just ask you to be with your children, help the world to know you, help the world to be more full of the Holy Spirit, Lord. And we know that every good thing is from you. So we just ask to be full of that. Um, and just to be more personal, I have somehow injured myself. Um, so please help me to rehabilitate myself. I'll be start working on that as soon as we finish this reading tonight. Um, and please, of course, pray for my mother and her mental health. Um, I pray for everyone here and what they're going through with their work, with their family, with their love, with their health, with their absolutely everything, God. I don't know what to pray for as I ought, but I do pray that the Holy Spirit is able to pray on my behalf with groanings too loud for words, Lord. Um, so please hear the prayers of your children. We are so grateful, Lord. We are so grateful. Thank you. Forgive us for our sins. We love you, Lord. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. That's the end of chapter 7. Chapter 8 is next. My vision is all blurry from praying, but God is good, and it's a blessing and a pleasure to have you here. Bye-bye.